Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. These are the big three when it comes to children's entertainment on cable television. Any other network that has tried to enter the children's cable network scene, like The Hub or Fox Family Channel, quickly found themselves to be sold or retooled. But before the big three became the big three in the 90s, there were other outlets for cartoons on cable. Most notably, Cartoon Blocks. These blocks tend to show on random channels that us kids at the time would accidentally stumble upon. Did we change the channel? Hell no! We sat right down and watched whatever was on the tube. Especially if there was nothing else on the broadcast channels. <coughs> Sunday mornings! <clears throat> Excuse me. We are going to take a look into a handful of these blocks. They are going to be out of order, so keep that in mind when I talk about a certain animation company. So, ready or not, let's take a look at our first block on this list. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Hello friends, I'm Tunamp, and this is the history of TNT Toons. Now the reason why I'm starting out with TNT Toons is simple. TNT Toons is simple to talk about. This block was a result of a number of things. In the mid 80s, Ted Turner acquired the rights to MGM. This included their cartoon library. I'll get more into that when I talk about TBS. There is also the fact that Turner had access to a lot of public domain cartoons. These included Looney Tunes and Popeye the Sailor Man. MGM also had the Pink Panther cartoons as well. But the big purchase that Turner made was in November of 1991, when he purchased Hanna-Barbera. Soon shows like The Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, Johnny Quest, and Yogi Bear started airing on the block. Less than a year after the Hanna-Barbera purchase, Turner launched Cartoon Network. But still, TNT Toons was a big thing as it continued to air on TNT throughout the mid-90s. The block, well, maybe not on the block itself, but there was an original Hanna-Barbera movie made for TNT. This was Johnny Quest and the Cyber Insects. This is a sequel to a movie that aired on another block that we will get to in a little bit. This is the second thing of Johnny Quest to feature Ray Spannon's daughter, Jessie. Not as personal as the first, but it is a good second introduction to that character. It's actually kind of refreshing that TNT got an original animated anything because most of the time they had to share original programming with TBS and Cartoon Network. The one benefit that TNT had was they tend to be the first out of the three networks to air original series. Now Cyber Insects was introduced in November of 1995. Oddly enough, in August of 1996, less than a year of Cyber Insects release, Hanna-Barbera unleashed the real adventures of Johnny Quest. Which is probably the best looking animated anything Hanna-Barbera has put out. The reason why I'm putting this show on TNT is because it was the first network to air it. You see, Turner would air the show in the morning on TNT Toons, in the afternoon on TBS, and in primetime on Cartoon Network. That is until the series was moved to Toonami in 1997. As beautiful and as good as the writing is, The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest is a mess. When I first watched this series, it was fine. Until the cast changed, then it was confusing. It was as if the characters devolved. And looking at the reasons now, I kind of figured out why they did it. Well, the series was in development hell with delays and late scripts. Again, the whole series is a mess. So the people responsible were taking off the project and Hanna-Barbera put new people in. People who retooled the show. I would not have been so upset about it, but they replaced the entire cast. Which Hanna-Barbera bought out that cast contracts. Is this a common thing? Perhaps? But to me, it feels kind of unprofessional. Personally, I think this series might have done better if it wasn't for the changes. I do have to talk about Quest World and the real adventures of Johnny Quest. You know, the computer animated VR world, the Quest team and Galvatron used to hack into computers. I know his name is Sird, but that is Frank Welker's Galvatron voice. The motion capture is real with this one, folks. Yet it's still better computer animation compared to a lot of computer animation these days. The history of creating Quest World is spotty as well, since Johnny Quest bankrupt a company. 
In the end, the whole series might have been too much for Hanna-Barbera. Another first for TNT came in April of 1996, as they were the first to air Dexter's Laboratory. Well, the series, not the world premiere Tomb Pilots. Yeah, it's hard to think that Dexter's Lab, a Cartoon Network staple, aired first on TNT. Well, the reason why that was is because TNT had a cartoon block on Saturday afternoons. So TNT aired it first, and then TBS and Cartoon Network aired the new episode on Sundays. This is a pretty good way to establish the series. Get as many eyes on it as possible, make it a series for kids to gravitate to Cartoon Network when TNT Toons left TNT, which happened in 1998. More series was added to the network when Warner Brothers brought out Turner. One was Tasmania, and oddly enough, Garfield and Friends. Don't leave, we need to take a short break. Stay tuned for Bugs Bunny, here on TNT Toons. Time for more mystery. Scooby Dooby Doo now continues on TNT Tunes. Since we talked about cyber insects, and that really wasn't part of TNT Tunes, I had to talk about some of the other specials TNT did outside of TNT Tunes. At one point, Turner got his hands on the animated library of Dr. Seuss. This included Cat in the Hat, Halloween is Grinch Night, The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat, Horton Hears a Who, The Lorax, and so many more. Most of these played on TNT, and because of this, TNT actually had some original programming based off of Dr. Seuss books. The first was a television special based off of Dr. Seuss's Butter Battle Book, a special that was directed by legendary director Ralph Bakshi, a book and special that looked at the concerns and fears the world had during the Cold War. He had one side called the Yooks and the other side called the Zooks, fighting to determine who was right when it came to which side of the bread was the right way to butter their bread. The reason why the battle is, is dumb. The reality of the situation when we look into our own lives is the fear is actually real, especially as we continue to build bigger and better weapons that may or may not take us out. In fact, there is a wall dividing both nations that are warring with each other. But the interesting part is, before this special came out, the real life wall that inspired the wall in the Butter Battle book, the Berlin Wall, came down four days before the special aired. Which means the special was dated even before it was released. The other Dr. Seuss book that was adapted into a special was his last book, Daisy Head Maisie. Which is an odd little story about accepting who you are and cherishing what you've got currently. The Butter Battle book came out in 1989 and Daisy Head Maisie came out in 1995. There are a number of other Dr. Seuss specials as well, most notably documentaries. There was two of them, both of which came out the same year. The first was In Search of Dr. Seuss, a documentary starring Kathy Najimy, Matt Frewer, Christopher Lloyd, Robin Williams, Patrick Stewart, and Billy Crystal, and so many more. It was a special that looked at the rise of Dr. Seuss and how he became the author that we all grew up with. The other documentary played alongside the Chuck Jones holiday classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The classic Christmas tale that Turner got his hands on in the early 90s. That played mostly on TBS, TNT, and Cartoon Network up until ABC got the broadcast rights. How the Grinch Stole Christmas Special Edition played the original special, and then it would have a documentary on the creation of the special. The special was narrated by the late, great Phil Hartman. Later on, when ABC got their hands on the special and the documentary, they replaced Phil Hartman's narration with Tom Bergeron and aired it as an anniversary special. And of course, the reason for that is because of the tragic death of Phil Hartman and his wife. And finally, there is What's Up Doc, a salute to Bugs Bunny, made in 1990. A loving tribute to that rascally rabbit and the writers and directors behind him. It's actually a precursor to two beloved cartoons Network series, Toon Heads and The Tex Avery Show, two series that looked into the history of cartoons and then would play those cartoons alongside with trivia and other fun things that historians like me just eat up. The special was no exception, as they would look at Bugs Bunny and a history of a certain director, play their best shorts, and then look at another director. It's very obvious that Turner cared about cartoons and their history. 
but I would be remiss if I didn't talk about TNT's magnum opus. TNT presents... The Rudy and Go-Go World Famous Cartoon Show. It's so odd, so bizarre, but you just can't take your eyes off of it. Basically, it's two marionettes and a goat just shooting the breeze with some kind of theme in between classic and sometimes new cartoon shorts. There's a space alien about? Let's deal with it between droopy shorts. Yeah, I just realized what I just said. Go-Go is lost. Let's find him between Bugs Bunny cartoons. The background is obviously a green screen because they use old movie and cartoon clips as the backdrop. During the series run, TNT also aired the Flintstone Scooby-Doo and eventually Dexter's Laboratory during the show. The whole thing is just eye candy, but it's really fun to watch. The characters were so popular that TNT had them host a New Year's Eve movie marathon called the New Year's Flaming Cheese Ball and introduced a music video called Go Go Para Presidente for the 1996 election. Unfortunately, the series lasted for two years from 1995 to 1997 when TNT bowed out of the cartoon game so that Cartoon Network was the only Turner network to have cartoons. And due to copyright issues, it's highly doubtful that the series will ever be released on DVD or Blu-ray. Later on, Adult Swim mentioned that Rudy would go on to replace Brack reading the Adult Swim news. That never happened. TNT Toons had a good run, but it was nothing too spectacular. It was a precursor to the old school Cartoon Network, playing reruns of classic theatrical cartoons and Hanna-Barbera cartoons. However, TNT Toons did put a lot of effort in advertising and bumpers for the block and came up with something really unique with Rudy and Gogo. -Go. This was truly a block for old school. I'm Toonamp, and next up on this series, we look at TNT's sister station, The Super Station. Thanks for watching. Well, every day my family can't wait to watch tunes on TNT. We know Jerry Mouse, with Tom the Cat. I love these tunes, but who is that? Pumpkin puts and Mutch Mouse are having a feud. Dick Dastardly and Muttley are out being rude. You know, Snagglepuss is having some fun, he says. Exit, stage left. And man. he's on the run. Wally Gator once again has escaped from the zoo. And Penelope Pitstop doesn't know what to do. Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> Quick draw McGraw's taking care of the West as the great, great ape towers over the rest. Hong Kong Fooey knocks the bad guys down when McGilla Gorilla starts jumping around. And of course, there's Huckleberry Hound. Just sit back and watch with me the 